Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to formulate self-foaming products. Now there's a lot of advantages with self-foaming products uh, and I'm going to show you two different types today. The first is a micellar water and as you can see it's actually the pump head that makes it foam when it comes out. And I'm also going to show you an incredibly soft feeling hand or body wash. Now I'm going to set these aside so you can see the foaming profile from these products last quite a long time. And I'm also using all natural and naturally derived materials in this video. And a lot of these materials, even small brands can access readily. So when we're creating these products, usually when you make a natural surfactant, one of your biggest issues is getting it thick. When you've got a self foaming product, it doesn't matter if it's water thin. You don't need to thicken it, which takes away one of the big problems, especially associated with natural surfactants. The other thing is because the pump helps them foam so well, you can use a really low input of surfactants and still get a high foaming result that keeps your consumer happy. Remember, they want to see a lot of foam as a mark of quality, and then they want the product to feel really nice on their skin. Using glucosides can create foam, but often doesn't feel the best on the skin. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to combine surfactants to get a really lovely skin feel and also get different performance characteristics from a micellar face cleansing product compared to a hand and body cleansing product, which needs to clean better and foam more than the face product. Let me show you how. Now the first product I'm going to show you is this micellar cleansing foam and this contains less than 5% active surfactant content. So it means it's relatively cheap to produce but you can see you still get a relatively creamy and dense foam from such a small surfactant input. So I'm starting here with my water and glycerins already combined. Here I have my essential oil preservative and vitamin E. Now to this I'm going to add my solubilizing material which is also acting as my super fatting material. Now I've got a great video on natural solubilizers. Please watch that if you haven't already seen that because one of the most important things when you're creating these products in order to get a nice clear product is to use a good natural solubilizer. In this particular case I'm using the solubilizing agent as my super fatting material as well which makes the product feel really lovely on application and after wash off on the skin. It's really important that you combine the oil phase with the solubilizer first and this should be nice and clear looking before you go further. Then I'm adding the surfactant material to this. And again, I'm making sure they're mixed well and the mixture is really clear before I start adding it to the water phase. Now this is an important step, the way I've just done this, so that we can end up with a really clear finished product. Now I'm going to add this to the water phase slowly so that it doesn't form a milky or cloudy looking solution. Now I just need to check and adjust the pH. And there I have my beautifully clear solution that will be high foaming when using a special self foaming pump head. Now let's look at the differences when we're creating the body wash. Now in the body wash product we need to use more surfactants and we should use the ideal combination of anionic, a non-ionic and super fatting material. Remember when we're making a natural product we can't include amphoteric surfactants because they are not totally natural. Uh, so in this case we're going to add a high foaming non-ionic material as well as super fatting material. I again have my water and glycerin already prepared and I've got my essential oils preservative and antioxidant prepared also. Now the first step is the same as last time. I'm going to add the solubilizing material 
and this is also my super fatting material. And I'm adding this first because it's really important in this formula I have a higher lipid content so I need to make sure it's solubilized well before I add the surfactants which are very diluted and especially before I add this mixture to the water otherwise I won't get a nice clear end product. Again making sure that my oils are in the solubilized micelles before I add my diluted surfactants and then I can add the other surfactant materials. Now this formula here there is around 10% uh, total active surfactant content so it's still relatively low for a body wash product but still foams and performs beautifully. Again, making sure that the lipid portion is totally solubilized within the mixed micelles before we add it to water so that we can end up with a beautifully clear solution, otherwise it just won't work. And there we have our beautifully clear end product that still provides a luxurious dense foam. And that's really all there is to it. There's a couple of important things to remember though if you want to end up with these beautiful clear looking solutions. The first thing is the solubilizer is very important. Your essential oil combination may affect your solubilizer too. Now if you make a good choice with your solubilizing agent, you should test it out if you use something different to what I've done and see how it feels on the skin. Often they give a lovely conditioning and super fatting property. But if you don't use what I use, make sure you check that just in case because my formulation examples are making use of the solubilizing material to not only solubilize the essential oil component, but also to ensure a lovely, smooth, soft and conditioned skin feel after wash off. The other thing is when you're making a body or hand self foaming product, your consumer is going to expect them to foam for longer. That's why I've got extra surfactant content in the hand body wash product compared to the micellar cleansing foam. I've used very mild surfactants in these formulas and I've kept the surfactant content quite low but you'll see they still perform really well. Here's those foam profiles as you can see they're still going quite well. Make sure you follow my method where I solubilize the essential oil and lipid portion first before adding the diluted surfactant materials and then I made sure that was all solubilized and in my cells properly before adding it to the water phase and then you saw me add to the water phase quite slowly bit by bit so that the solution remained nice and clear. That's another really important step. Now my formulation examples, I've adjusted the pH to around 5.5 to suit the skin, but if you are making a product that's specifically to be used around the eye area, just remember that pH should be a little higher to be compatible with the eye area and match the pH of tears around 6.5 to 7. And that's to just help reduce any potential irritancy if the product is intended for around eye area use. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and leave any comments below. Let us know what you'd like to see more of. Make sure you subscribe for all of our video content. Happy formulating.